Hi guys, welcome to the latest podcast of my series. Today I've got a really great friend of mine on, Jackie Watkins. I'll introduce you to her in a second. But first I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land that I'm calling in from. I'm here in Baldwin Q on the land of the Rundry people, and I'd like to pay respect to their elders past, present and emerging. For those people that don't me, know, know me, I'm AJ Williams, and this is Yarning Black. So today I've got one of my um, great friends that I've known for a long time, Jackie Watkins, on with me. Hi, Jackie. Hi, AJ. Oh, thanks for having me. Um, I'm really excited to be here with you today. It's been a while since we've caught up. Yeah, and I know it's been hard to get you on, but we've finally got you. So <laughs> thank, thanks for joining me. But what I might do is just get you to introduce yourself, tell us who you are and where you're from. Sure. Um, firstly, I'd like to acknowledge the lands on where I'm dialing in from today, the Wurundjeri um, lands, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. Um, I am a Jingli and Mudba, Mudba person from uh, the Northern Territory. Um, so I was, I was born in Larrakee country up in, in Darwin, beautiful Darwin, um, and uh, raised in Mapatui, Alice Springs. Um now, just just I'll just give you a little bit of history around around this and put it into context because Mum was actually removed uh, at the age of five and um, uh, taken up to um, Darwin first. So so our country is Elliot. And I'm not sure if people know where Elliot is, um, but that's um, so you've got Alice Springs, Tennant Creek. So it's about another hundred k, hundred and fifty k's north, heading yeah. towards Catherine. Um, so she was removed, taken up to Darwin, and then um, put on a boat over to Melville Island, so TV Islands, yeah. um, on a, in a little town called um, Pearl and Gimpy. Um, and mum was there for for many many years, um, and was never never uh, taken back home, or never saw her mum or a family again. Um, so it wasn't really until later in life that we got connected back into our mob. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's it's still a journey for all of us. Um, you know, it, it's pretty amazing. I meet people, uh, relatives, um, and, and I met a relative for the first time. Actually, um, oh no, sorry, I know I'm digressing, but this, right, this, all makes, oh. this all make this will all make sense. So yeah. I was at um, on uh, a couple of weekends ago. Um, at the Tanner Creek Bria, uh, which was um, we had Tanner Creek mob up here um, showcasing their artwork, and it's on at the Acker at the moment. Um, and one of my cousins was actually singing there, um, Eleanor Dixon, and that's the first time I've met her. So you know, um, it was so exciting and just such a beautiful reunion. Reunion, and um, yeah, and I'll tell you a little story about. Um, that a little bit later on in the podcast as well. Cool, cool. Mm. Um, so you went to primary school in the Northern Territory? I sure did. Alice Springs yeah. went to, Alice the, yeah, the Olsh, Our Lady of the Sacred Hearts. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So at school, uh, how much Aboriginal studies did you learn at school? Absolutely zippo. None. There, there was none. Um, yeah. Yeah, all, all I can remember, all I can remember is going to church and uh, the nuns being in the classroom with us. Oh, wow. <laughs> do you think, because you've got kids now and grandkids, but do you think Aboriginal perspectives have been taught more effectively in class now or do you do think there needs to be a lot of work on that? Oh, look, I, I really think we need a lot more work, but it is a lot better. Um, so I've got uh, two grandchildren, May is nine, um, and we've just had Bubs born, um, Malachi, uh, seven weeks ago. Um, but, you know, um, uh, Maya comes home with, you know, she knows about the flag. She knows about, uh, she's aware of our culture. She's, uh, it's taught in her school. Um, so it's really, it's really good, um, that, that awareness in the schools now, but it can be better. Yeah. So after high school, what did you study or what did you do initially? Um, oh, gosh, I was a bit of a rebel. Um, 
anyway, <laughs> I did work. <laughs> I worked hard. I was in Darwin at that time. So I finished my high school in Darwin. Um, so I ended up leaving it at the age of 16 and working for a legal firm. Okay. Um, so I worked many years in a legal firm, uh, you know, in, ver- in various positions uh, during that time. So, yeah. yeah. So what made you move to Melbourne, down to Nam? Um, I had my family down here at the time. So mum mum and dad. Now, this this is this is really interesting. Like I call it the the triangle. So, you know, um mum was removed up to Pearl and Gimpy up in Tiwi Islands. And then when the Japanese bombed, they were all um transport transported down here to Melbourne. Yeah. Um, and as young girls they were put into Loretta College um mind you while they're at Loretta College they weren't allowed to fraternize and this is the this is their words fraternize with the white kids um so very very separated and then they so they stayed down here for a little while and then they're all taken across to Carrington in South Australia um and from so they stayed there I think for a couple of years and then they were taken back up after the war, back up to um, Pearl and Gympie. But it's funny how we've always followed that, our family. So we've either gone to Melbourne, uh, Adelaide, I've got family in Adelaide, um, family in Darwin. So we've got that, like, that triangle. Um, yeah, yeah. So family moved down here. So I was in I, think I was in Queensland at that stage um, and I just wanted to be closer to family. So that's why I moved here over 20 years ago. Now they've all left me alone. <laughs> like there's no one here apart from yeah. um my sister's up in Shepparton. Um yeah. yeah, yeah. So but I'm not going anywhere because this is home. You know, yeah. my kids were my kids went to school here and um yep. Melbourne's so trying to us. work out how long I met you, and it's probably about twenty years ago now. It would be because I was looking at um some of my Facebook posts that came up and there was so it was that dental health services. That's where yeah. we first met. Oh, that's when I first got you in to do training. Yes. Yeah. I think, was it? Yes, yes. Yeah. So that was quite a few years ago. Yeah. Yeah. So what got yeah. you into health? Um, well, uh, I was in the legal profession for quite a few years. Then I, um, then I got m- married. Uh, and I was a stay-at-home mum and I did um, education, like early childhood education while the kids were growing up. Yeah. Um, moved down, that's when I moved down here and um, it was just by chance, really. I, I got I got into it. There was a job going at Melbourne Uni at Anemda Vic Health Career Health Unit. I went for that and got it. Um, and that was my journey of being in health and it was amazing, like... Um, you know, I didn't realise our health issues with mm. within, you know, that we face in communities. And it made it ended up everything just made sense to me, like what was going on, you know, with yeah. mum and with us and and our kids and community, you know, it all started to fit. And then I went over to dental health services. Yeah. And then there was another big aha around oral health and what what the effects on our whole health has to do with our with our um, mouth it was yeah. amazing yeah so um and then from there i went over to uh work in a hospital for quite a few years and managed the aboriginal health unit and um loved it loved it mm. and, and now you've set up your own consultancy business i have yeah, tell us a little bit about that and what do you do oh okay so that's my, you know, as as you know, we all wear hats, different hats in our life. Um, I still work part time. Yep, <laughs> work part time to bring that money in. Um, yeah. Got to live some way. And um, so the consultancy business came about, you know, my work experience over the years, and and there were quite a few gaps that I could see. Um, and it it also came about, you know, people like you, AJ, that I really. Um, that I really look up to, and you've actually been a a, a real inspiration in um in my life, and uh, you know oh <laughs> and um 
and just other people around that, that, that just so inspirational. I ended up doing this um, Williamson Leadership through Leadership Victoria uh, in 2021. Um, and it just, it helped me grow as a person and believe in myself. Whereas before that, I actually didn't believe in myself. I didn't think I could do anything like this. Um, it, it was a, it was a long journey. It was eight months. Um, it was uh, I really had to, you know, be comfortable in my own skin and the knowledge I've got, and actually recognize the fact that hey, you know what? I have been doing leadership. I have, and I have these skills, and actually be confident about it. So then I thought, you know what? I'm going to take this leap. So I started up my little business, didn't, you know, didn't do anything really about it for a, for a little bit. And then um, um, I was getting sort of odd uh, um, offers here and there to come and do some cultural safety um, uh, training and, um, and those sort of little things and be part of uh, uh, other consultants as businesses to speak yeah. and everything else and and that just sort of built up my confidence as well um but I met I, I saw an ad about um uh, and I'm not getting paid for this by the way many rivers <laughs> this isn't a paid ad <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. um so many rivers I saw they had an offer for a free consult oh not consultancy but um like a mentoring um and to help with the business yeah. Um, so I decided, oh, you know what, I'm just going to contact them because I had no idea how to set up a, uh, uh, um, what do you call it? Uh, yeah, like actually had, you know, um, the web or anything like that, yeah. a website. I had no experience around any of that, Facebook page, all that sort of stuff. Um, so I contacted them and they got in touch with this beautiful lady uh, she's only young, um, and isn't it terrible? I'm going to forget her name. Uh, anyway, I'll come back. Um, so linked in with her, and I've been working with her for now seven months, and she's helped me develop stuff and and really put things together, and it's just such an exciting time. Um, but it so happens that we're related. We got oh. talking, and her grandmother uh, is jingling. From yeah, and uh, Grace. Sorry, I've, I've just remembered her name, Grace. This is what happens when we get old; we forget things. Um, and just yeah, such a beautiful young lady. And so she, yeah, she's just helped me on the journey. Um, yeah. And in uh, and I've been able to work with. Um, am I allowed to name drop? Yeah, yeah, I am. Yeah. Okay, so I've been able to do some work with the Smith family um and a few other and i've got a another big one with the um the he with hester and all that sort of stuff so you know and my my main focus uh of course is around that cultural safety um but it's around that mentoring as well that cultural mentoring which yeah. i've noticed is such a big big gap um throughout my whole work experience and uh the uh racism that i've caught within a workplace um, and all sorts of things that's happened in a workspace um, and just not having the support from non-Aboriginal people. Yeah. Um, I just, it, it's just, it's such a huge gap. So that's really where I'm heading and, and that's around that mentoring, um, yeah. that cultural mentoring for non-Aboriginal um, managers, uh, executive, um, and just giving them the tools and, uh, you know, helping them along the journey of working with their Aboriginal staff and supporting them in a culturally safe a way. Yeah. Yeah. So what's the name of your business? And I know it's got a special meaning as well. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, I was, I was, yeah. so um, it's called Jinkaji Consultancy. So Jinkaji in our language, our jingling Woodbutter wood, language, it means star. So, um, so I'm star consultancy. Yeah. <laughs> Um, the the reason why I picked that name was because you know as we were growing up, 
Uh, Mum, we used to take uh, the mattresses and everything outside to the front yard in Alice Springs and we'd lie under the stars and Mum would tell us all the stories, you know, about the Seven Sisters and um, all that sort of stuff. So it had really special meaning for me. Um, and Eleanor, my cousin who I met um, the other week, uh, told me too that that actually has, it's very maternal as well so it's 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 a very maternal um uh thing for us as well up there the, the seven sisters and the stars it means a lot yeah yeah, yeah so th that's re really uh, really interesting and the and my logo actually represents um the french penny leaves you know up in darwin just yeah. i just love the french penny leaves and the colors represent from the water, from the ocean to the desert. So that's yeah. sort of my colours in it as well. Yeah. Frangipani yeah. is actually one of my favourite flowers. And oh, I love the Frangipani. They don't grow well in Melbourne. No, they don't. No, no, that's why I try and get up to uh, Darwin as much as I can. Yeah, get up to the NT. <laughs> one of my friends owned a, a, a Frangipani farm on the Gold Coast and oh. they actually had a variety of different they, they, they had the pink frangipanis oh, and the nice. and the black frangipanis oh. like with the yellow, um, like yellow inside. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, nice. And the red and blue ones, which are really beautiful. Yeah, well. beautiful. Oh. Yeah. One of my favourite flowers and they smell delicious. They do, don't they? I love them. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah, you, talked a bit of, you talked about a bit of cultural safety a second ago. What does mm. cultural safety mean to you? Um, yeah, look, cultural safety, I think one of the things um, I like to say about cultural safety, it sort of embodies um, my whole being. So, you know, it's spiritually, it's physically, it's emotionally. Um, and, uh, yeah, yeah, and I think... You know, as an Aboriginal mo uh, woman, um, it's how I think and feel and know. You know, it's that cultural, um, that, that's my identity. So um, it's it's actually about my identity as well. So um, so whether it's working into a, walk, uh, a workplace, working, hang on, walking, walking into, a, into workplace. a workplace or any other organisation, even a medical centre, Um you know, or going to events or going to training, even community gatherings, it's always there. It's always, um, you know, that culture of safety is what I'm thinking about all the time. Am I safe in this environment? Yeah. Um, do you know Do you know what I mean? Like it's, um, it's about being valued and it's about being respected um, and that the spaces are um, created to, you know, be who we want to be as well um but having said that without being sort of um the one to shoulder all those expectations either so within a workspace that you're going to be the 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 aboriginal person you're going to be that person who will um always be doing the events and things like that like a token bit of a tokenistic so I'm fully aware of that. And um, anyway, I, th I think I've been uh, pretty lucky in the last few few years to, to go into organisations that are quite open to learning. Um, yeah. 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 And I think, you know, on top of that as well, it's, it's actually really crucial to know what land you're on. I'm a visitor here. Um, and wherever I go, I've travelled all around Australia. I've, I've lived and worked in different um you know, different uh, states. So I always make sure that um, I know whose land I'm on, who, what the protocols are within that community as well. Who who are your, um, you know, who are your uh, respected elders and respected leaders within the community if I'm working in community, even if yeah. I'm not working in community, you know. Um, so for me, that's all around that, that cultural safety within within myself as well and my surrounds yeah yeah so do you another word that gets thrown around a lot is reconciliation yeah yes what does that mean to you 
I think reconciliation is a hard one at the moment. Um, uh, you know, I think this current, in this current time, where we we lost um, lost the um, refer you know the failed ref referendum, um, really opened up a can of worms, didn't it? Really, and you know there, there's a flip side to it. So it was really great because you're able to see um, you know the allies that that we have, and, and there were people that were willing to learn more about um, yeah. you know about um, First peoples of Australia, um, and learn more, and then you had that flip side of, yeah, no, you're coming to steal our land. You're that was still there. It yeah. was it was amazing. Like I couldn't believe. I went to a couple of the um, events, and and uh, some community people would say, oh, well, why won't they take our land if they get, you know, uh, get voted yes, and and I didn't think. I actually didn't think people felt like that anymore. So it was a bit of an eye opener for me, and I thought, "Wow, we've got a long way to go as far as reconciliation goes." You know, uh, reconciliation means two part, you know, two parties coming together to reconcile and work out their differences. Yeah. Um, with this failed referendum, that's taken us back, and the damage, you know, the harm that it did to community was mm -hmm. uh, was just. Devastating. I think. I think it took. It's taken me a while. I know that much. Um, but then you get the racism. It's reared its ugly head. Like you know, we there's always racism. You'll never get rid of it. Yeah. You know. Um, but the fact that now they're so bold about it. Um, for example, you know, with today's current climate and welcome to country. Mm. Uh, what's been going on there, and it's just. Unbelievable, you know. I'm a glutton for punishment. I read all the, you know, messages, yeah. <laughs> and I just I I read it because I think I um I can go in with rose coloured glasses a lot, yeah. right? And I read that to bring me back down to earth to think, to realise. Hang on a minute, there are people out there that want to remain ignorant, yeah, and want to remain, and you will never change their mind. Um, so that is, yeah. So we've got a few steps to take now for reconciliation. Mm. I, I think it's interesting you saying like reading the comments. You know, some black fellows go, we don't read, shouldn't read the comments, but I, yeah, I, yeah. I read them a little bit. But I like clicking on people's profiles as well to actually go, yes, a lot of them are made up profiles yesterday, but a lot of them you're quite shocked when they actually tell you, I'm a nurse at this hospital or I'm a a teacher at this school or I'm an early childhood educator at this place or I'm a doctor or I'm a, like a health professional or mm -hmm. you know, holy shit. I wonder if your workplace knows yeah. this is your book. This is the wording that you're carrying on about it and the derogatory yeah. comments that often still describe Aboriginal people in 2024. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I'd, uh, yeah. It just blows me away that people can still get away with, with what they say. Um, yeah. Anyway, I mean, what, so what do you do? You just, you know, unfortunately we we are the educators um, and it doesn't matter where we are, what we're doing, we'll always be educating. And I, and I think that that's why I think this is such a good platform as well, um, you know, just showcasing um, how, um, you know, how well we do do, mm. you know, and uh, and just trying to get rid of those stereotypes. Oh, my God. Uh, if I could give you a million dollars and a magic wand, and I have got a magic wand here, see? Oh, nice. I like that one. <laughs> magic wand. But if I could give you my magic wand and the whole bucket of money, which I don't have, but if I did, I'd give it to both, what would you, <laughs> what would you want to try to fix first? That I love that question because I was only because I actually work for Consumer Action Law Centre, right? And we have a lot of a uh, lot of um, um, uh, programs that are running. And I was only talking about this the other day, and one of them was around energy, and you know the price of energy. Now, remote communities 
um, are still paying for energy. You know, um, they pay by the energy. Like they've got a card and they put money on it. So, yeah, yeah if, the, if it runs out, too bad. So you've got to continually put this stupid money on it. But you know what I'd love to do is I'd love to go to go out there to the remote communities and set up, um, uh, you know, like the, what's it called? Um, uh, not, not the wind farms, the other one, the... Um, solar. The solar. Solar. Yeah. solar and all that sort of stuff. Mate, if I had a million dollars, I'd be I'd be knocking on the doors of some of these um, big corporations and saying, "Come on, you know, um, let's go out there and make sure, you know, make sure people have got access to electricity, got access to clean water." That's what I'd be doing. A million dollars wouldn't. No. Do like, much. I've got zillions, apparently, a zillions of dollars. <laughs> <laughs> well, in that case, that's that's what I'd do. That, no, that's, you know, that's beautiful. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and think, do you think mm -hmm. people really understand in Australia when we talk about remote, what remote actually looks like? No, no, they've got no idea, no idea. Yeah. You know, um, one of the things when I when I worked in the hospital, um, we ran a program for nurses to go up to remote communities up in the Northern Territory. So we worked with the mob up there. And they did six yeah. week stunts out in commute, remote communities. Some of these nurses had never left Melbourne, done their training in Melbourne, never left Melbourne. And uh, so, you know, there was a lot of coaching along the way. And then they did their um, training up in Darwin with the local community up there. And they came back completely different people. Yeah. Completely different. Um, they just couldn't get over the isolation. You know, you're talking isolation you're talking um housing you're talking oh so many things fresh food yeah you know um so so many things and uh, and i'm glad i got them to experience that yeah i mm -hmm. i used to love doing can you remember me I, for a while i used to do a lot of remote stuff so i was mm -hmm. always up in like places like alpala and and you know up in, up on the, the utopia homelands where it's hours drive back to Alice Springs mm. and you're going up into the communities where still that still don't have any running water, still don't have yeah. electricity. And the couple of those communities are the ones that actually had one solar panel that was put it that was put onto <laughs> like a little a little shed that mm -hmm. still has that still has a your that card you were talking about. Yeah. You put yeah. the energy card in mm. and power points that run that run across the ground mm. to people's houses just so they can actually get heating and cooling and yeah and it's crazy working. yeah it's absolutely crazy yeah I, I don't know i just think yeah people you know and then you read some of these stupid comments about people saying oh i get everything and you know rah rah yeah. I, yeah, I love okay. that one where people go, you get all this stuff for free yeah if someone says that to me in training the first mm. thing i do is I've got next Thursday off, so if you could make that list for me of all the <laughs> stuff, <laughs> including where I pick it up, if oh. it at all, let me know oh. where I'm going to oh, be. No, right? <laughs> yeah, we get cars and boats and houses and free oh. education. Yeah, got the life, haven't we? No, life no. of Larry. Why are we working, AJ? <laughs> <laughs> I have to go back to my bank manager and tell him, this. why am I paying, why am I paying my mortgage? Isn't it for free? <laughs> it's my land. <laughs> oh, true, though. Yeah. yeah. So we, we work with a lot of young people as well that uh, who are Aboriginal that don't know much about culture. If When they come to you and say, hey, Jackie, where do I start looking? Like, wh what would I do to find out more? What What advice would you give them? Yeah, look, I would um, uh, connect in with uh, the local um, gathering places, um, if there's any. Uh, I'd, uh, I'd, my um, resources, I'd link you to my resources, lean into all of those and uh, and just see what um, programs and just it, just even meeting, meeting, you know, um, an elder catching up with them and having a bit of a yarn as well um, is really good because um, it's really sad, you know, these these kids are so can be so lost. They want to know more, 
but unfortunately, um, you know, and this 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 is this stems from the stolen gen, stems all back from there. Um, that you know, the these. Oh, yeah, sorry, it just makes me really sad that these kids are, are, are really lost, um, you know, and I think as a community we need to come together to support them in, in any way, shape or form that we can. Yeah. 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 Now, there's, allyship is an interesting concept as well. And yeah. My question is, is that there are a lot of viewers that tune into my podcast that are not Indigenous. Mm. One thing I ask a lot of the a lot of the guests that come onto my podcast is what makes a good ally? Um I think a a good ally is someone someone who walks with you. Um and it's you, you know and I think they need to be curious as well. They they need to keep um, you know, that curiosity because, um, you know, um, how do I say it? I think being present and engaged in community and truly listening are, are really good allies. Um, uh, without going over the top, do you know what I mean? Just really asking for our advice, being there for us, supporting us. Um, in any way that we need to be supported, um, you know, I've, I've worked, I've, I've worked in a an organisation. Um, I walked in there, and it's predominantly a, a white organisation. There's only two Aboriginal people that work there, yeah. um, and all around the walls and everywhere you go, um, there's Aboriginal artwork. Uh, there's Aboriginal artwork. There's there's no other artwork there from any other cultures right and you'd say and probably you'd say well that's a good thing isn't it that's been culturally safe that actually made me so awkward and feel really uncomfortable um um because it was over the top they yeah. even had their plants they, they call their plants aboriginal names and i went along and i ripped all the names off and i thought that's really disrespectful but they thought yeah. they were doing something right. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just, um, yeah, there's there's got to be that balance. And and allies, um, you know, there's some fabulous allies. They, they, they come with a different lens. and um, But if they truly listen and truly walk beside us, that makes a really good ally. And I like that. how you said listen to us because I think, I know that when I do cultural awareness training, I say sometimes to be a good ally is to shut up and listen mm. and and you don't necessarily have to voice anything. Mm. It's listen. Yes. Giving us a platform to to listen, but, you know, but truly listen. What is yeah, it that truly, I, truly I, listen. Yeah, because you can listen but not hear. You know, there's two th two different things. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's like you know when my kids are watching TV and I yell out for them. Yeah, are they listening or actually are they hearing what I'm saying? The minute yeah. I say chocolate, they <laughs> hear me, right? Yeah. So yeah, wash the dishes. Yeah, they won't. Yeah, they, they, <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Selective yeah, so, hearing. Uh, mm, Very yeah. selective hearing. Now yeah, and um, and and I think one of the things that that's really good that I do in my training is a self reflection before I do anything. Everybody has to sit down and do a self reflection, and that really lets them look at themselves um, and looks looks at themselves as as a cultural being as well. What's their culture? Yeah, and and it's surprising the amount of people that stumps them. They don't realise that they've got their own culture. But yeah. they've never looked at it like that. So that really stumps a lot of people. Uh, yeah. I've, I've had some very interesting conversations around it. And even um, people that have come over here uh, as refugees um, don't recognise their original culture. They Or an Australian, uh, being an Australian, they recognise themselves as um, being a refugee. That's their culture. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Like, it just... 
it fascinates me how, um, yeah. Hmm. When people ask, you know, questions about, you know, what is Aboriginal culture, mm. that can be quite contentious a little bit because there's a stereotypical Aboriginal culture. Mm -hmm. but then there's kids like me that grew up in care mm. that wouldn't necessarily have had, you know, what they would call traditional Aboriginal culture. Mm. And the kids that we would have worked with, you know, family violence situations and out of home care, they've mm -hmm. got all the experiences. But the reality is, is that we've all, and, and you growing up as well, mm -hmm. all that together makes Aboriginal culture. Mm -hmm. If that yeah. makes sense. And I yeah. don't think, I don't think some Aboriginal people understand that, but I don't think non-Indigenous people understand that either. Mm. Yeah. And that's why it's really good to do that self reflection because yeah. you know, um, you know, what what is Aboriginal culture? Well, it's very broad, it's very diverse. Um, you know, so so my community up north is very different um to what I perceive myself as, you know what I mean? There's just been such a removal there. Um, yeah. 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 Mm. I'm just watching the time, but I've got a couple of final questions for you. And mm -hmm. is um, what so what information if if people want to work in Aboriginal affairs, either Indigenous or non-Indigenous, what are some things they should be aware of, or things that they need to look out for? Oh, for non-Aboriginal people, yeah, um, yeah. Look, I think um, they they really need to be aware of. One, what lands they're on, that you'd be surprised how many don't know, um, and the, um, you know, who the traditional owners are of those lands, what it actually means to the traditional owners of those lands. Are there any, um, uh, you know, sites there that are that are of relevance as well within that area? Um, who are your, uh, who are the respected? Aboriginal people within the community? Who are the elders? Um, are there any um, gathering places or uh, echoes echoes within within there as well? Um, just having that awareness. And then that's that's sort of like the external, and, and, and I'm, I'm being very brief here, there's so much more. Yeah. Um, uh, and then there's the internal. Who are your Aboriginal staff? Yeah. You know? Do they identify? Because there, there could be Aboriginal staff that don't want to identify purely because they don't want to have, shoulder all the stuff that goes on with being an Aboriginal person within an, an organisation. So, um, yeah, in a nutshell, awareness. Yeah. And cultural load is a really big thing for Aboriginal people that I don't think non-Indigenous people get as well that, and one thing that I know that you'd be you'd be talking to managers of non-Indigenous people about being very careful of some, of putting too much cultural load onto an Aboriginal staff yes. member. Yeah, you know, um, th this is another area for me that um, I'm a bit conflicted with, right? Because I I went into this uh, role um, with a non-Aboriginal uh, manager who basically said to me she was my gatekeeper, right? Yeah. So staff could, no, no, they're, they're dog, yeah, I'll make sense in a minute. Yeah. So, pe so people couldn't come and ask me to do things for them or ask for my opinion or anything else or if, to do anything without going through her first. So she was keeping an eye on my cultural load. That's yeah. basically what it was. I got really offended with that. Yeah. I said, I'm... I'm an Aboriginal person and I can I can do that for myself. If I don't feel comfortable, um, I will come to you and say, look, you know, such and such has asked me to do this. I would prefer not to do it, blah, 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 you know, and have that conversation. It's a two-way thing. I think, you know, saying to people that, you know, she's like a gatekeeper is like really, it's a bit icky. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. very... Very colonialistic. Yeah, yeah. And, and like, I, I'm an open book. Like, um, yeah. I would rather staff come to and talk to me. 
if they want to know something or have a client that they they really, you know, they, they're just stuck with and they just can't, I don't, don't know what to do, ask me. If I don't know, I'll tell you. Yeah. 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 Now, just watching the time, my final question is, what would you like people to walk away with from our yarn this afternoon? <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> Um, probably stay deadly, one of them. You mob out there because you are, you all are. Uh, for the non Indigenous people, I'd say be present and engaged, um, when you're in the moment with others, um, and your shared experience, you're far more likely to be curious. So, be just be present when you're in the company of, of us mob. You know, I think that's I think that's good advice. Mm. Yeah. Well, I want to say thank you very much for joining me today. You know how much I love you, and we have been friends for like twenty years or so. I was, I was still trying to work out exactly when. Yeah, it's a long time. Love you, a long time. It's it is about two thousand and five or something. Yeah. Which means that it's only 2025, so it's been 20 years. Oh, my gosh. That's crazy. Yeah. Oh, it's been so good to catch up with you. And, um, yeah, I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Yeah, cool. So, guys, I'll see you guys at the next podcast, and I thank Jackie for joining us. So thanks, thanks guys. guys. Bye.